Hey guys, it's Marta. Today I wanted to talk about gardening jobs I'm planning for October. It's super hot in Poland, seems like the middle of summer, but fall has come or autumn has come and uh, there's a lot of jobs to be done. Let's begin. September and the beginning of October in our family is uh, very important because uh, in September at the end my daughter has her birthday, then it's Michael's names day and then we have our wedding anniversary. So I always remember what the weather was like in previous years. So this year has been the hottest. Uh, we've had temperature like 26, 27 degrees Celsius, which is summer temperatures so i'm really really surprised but it's so nice in the garden uh, you can walk it's very very warm and even in the evening it's still really nice so i'm loving it but uh, october i know this will be a month when i will have a lot of work if you like uh, to have bulbs in your garden if you like to make your garden happy for the winter uh, and if you want it to look the best, uh, it's, uh, it's the month to work a lot. It's similar to March and April, I would say, uh, because there is a lot, to, a lot to be done. If uh, I want to divide my perennials, it's also the time. So this is another month where I need to gather all of my energy and go into the garden. First thing I wanted to talk about is the bulbs. Uh, I really like planting my bulbs after the first frost. So now it doesn't seem likely that it will happen very, very soon. Uh, but from the half of October until Christmas, uh, if the soil is uh, not frozen, this is always a good time to plant your bulbs. Uh, I'm starting at the half or the end of October. Preferably I would like to do it after the first frosts, but I don't want them to happen so quick because I still want my dahlias to bloom. But uh, this will be the time where I'll be planting them. But now is the great time to buy them. And I wanted to show you some bulbs and examples of a perfect bulb to choose. I brought a few bulbs to show you how to choose the best ones. If you're going to a shop that has uh, bulbs, always look for the bulbs that are the largest but the most important thing is that they are very plump uh, they are not soft and they are shiny this is the best way to choose your bulbs of course if you're looking at all the bulbs from one variety always choose the biggest ones because with bulbs bigger is always better uh, you will get bigger flowers of course depending on the variety you will have larger or smaller flowers but when you're choosing from one variety, it's always good to go for the big ones. Another thing to watch for is any spots that you can find on the bulbs. If you see any bluish or brown soft spots, discard those bulbs. They will be uh, sick very, very soon and they might give the sickness to uh, other bulbs. So I'm always searching for nice shiny ones with no, no, no spots on them. Sometimes you can get gentle brown spots that are uh, the bulb is still very firm so it's uh, then it's good but any bluish ones discard them immediately and what do I have here here is a tulip, tulip bulb uh, this is a perfect example of a very healthy bulb shiny very very firm uh, then we have uh, Narcissus this is a uh, nice shy maybe not that shiny because narcissus are rarely very very shiny but it's very very firm and then we have allium bulbs this is globe master so my favorite allium very very firm no almost no spots some gentle brown ones but no bluish ones and the biggest one you can see is ambassador these are the alliums i've shown you that bloom at the last from the spring uh, alliums because uh, drumstick alliums uh, blooms in uh, in the summer but from those blooming in uh, at the end of May and in June, this one was the last one to bloom. Very big purple flowers and the bulb is like ginormous.
I won't be planting my bulbs uh, for another three weeks. So what do you do when those bulbs arrive or you buy them early? Uh, when they arrive and you have them in plastic bags, always remove them from those plastic bags, put them in paper bags or in some kind of cardboard with, uh, of course, always uh, have a tag what variety you have and store them somewhere maybe not that even cool, but dry. This is the most important. Don't leave them in the garden where it's uh, wet. Then you will see that even though they were shiny and beautiful, they might in two, three weeks become moldy. So storing them in a, a cupboard in the house where it's dry in paper bags or in cardboard is the best way to go. Okay, uh, the subject of bulbs is done. Now let's talk about fertilizing your garden in the fall. Is it worth it or not? This is a good training for me. <laughs> when I started gardening several years ago, I did not fertilize my plants in the fall. I started a few years ago and I've seen a huge difference in the plants in spring. Uh, the fall or autumnal, depending on where you live, fertilization is different than the spring one or the summer one because we have very little nitrogen but we get a lot of potassium, magnesium, phosphorus and those minerals will help your plants uh, prepare better for the winter. Uh, those that have woody stems will get them sooner because of those minerals and I've seen so much difference so now I'm doing it every fall. I buy all of my fertilizers in bulk so bigger boxes because it's cheaper. Uh, this one is universal so you can use it on a lot of plants even your lawn for your uh, flowering plants for your fruit trees and this one is meant for conifers and uh, you use it on those and this one I really want to do because I missed some of my fertili fertilizing of some of my conifers so this is going for them. How do I do my fertilizing? So first I need to do all the cleaning. So I go into my borders and I try to clean as much as I can, try to clean all of the debris, all of the leaves, especially the leaves that have fungal diseases on them. So uh, like black spot, uh, I try to collect all of those leaves. I don't compost them, I throw them away and then I remove all the weeds. Of course, there are so many of them. And when I have a clean slate below my uh, bushes or the, trees then I can fertilize. Uh, I always take, I always read the label, this is very important, uh, it's very bad to fertilize just as you wish because you can really harm your plants. So always read how much fertilizer to use. It's always better to use less than to use too much because you can kill your plants. And then I, when you have a plant and it has a trunk, uh, we don't only fertilize around the trunk but we look at the whole tree up and then we like draw a circle and then we mix the fertilizer with the soil and then you can water it or choose a moment when it's going to be raining. This is the best moment and then we go to another plant and <laughs> it takes a moment with the, all of those plants in all of those borders. Okay, I will be fertilizing until the end of October. This is the best moment to fertilize, at least in my country, depending on where you live. But uh, the process of cleaning all of the borders will take a moment and I really need to gather my energy for October. September was a bit lazy for me. I don't know, maybe it's the weather that it was so summery, it was very, very warm and I, I worked a bit, but not as, I, as I'm used to my energy. So let me know if you have good energy for working or you prefer lower temperatures. I think this is it. I just really like working in the garden when it's 15 degrees to 20 degrees. When it's 26, I'm like, give me a book, give me a lounger and I can rest and look at the beautiful garden. Okay, what else can you do in uh, October? I will be <laughs> sowing some grass because we had a problem with uh, the mall and it destroyed part of my lawn and I think I will show you that in a video. Uh, I will be trying to sow some new seeds. Uh, this is a perfect moment to do that because you will get uh, the, the colder temperatures, it will be more moist and it will be a perfect time for the grass to grow. So this, this is my plan for the coming weeks. So what else can you do? October is a perfect moment to plant your plants in the ground. You can buy them bare root. This is always a great uh, opportunity to buy plants cheaper. This material is the same quality as the plants you buy in the pots, 
but it's cheaper to transport. So that's why we can get it cheaper. Uh, and I've had incredible results with bare root roses or bare root hydrangeas or bare root trees. My apples that you've seen in so many videos were planted as bare root uh, trees. So this is a great moment. You will get a lot of varieties will be available. So it's uh, great to search for something you've been dreaming about uh, and to plant them, plant it in your garden. October is a perfect moment to divide your perennials. Uh, I really love doing that in the fall uh, because the plants, if you now dig them out, you will just divide them, divide them into two, three or four. You can do it with a spade or uh, with a spade is I think the best uh, or the handheld, so the small one, you can also do that. Uh, then we plant them in the garden. Why do I like to do it in the fall? With perennials that are not very sensitive, uh, it is so much better because when you plant them in the ground, they will have few weeks to put on the new roots to like, uh, you know, get familiar with the space and the, uh, the roots will be so much bigger than the ones that you will divide in the spring. So I really like dividing them in the fall and in spring I divide only the plants that are very sensitive to frost. This is I think better for them. But with those perennials like the Branneras last year uh, in the fall I divided a lot of them and guys, you cannot tell which ones were divided. They bulked up so much during the season. I'm really happy with the result. They look beautiful still. When I'm choosing the plants to divide, I always look for the, the healthy ones, the, the healthiest of them all. And for those that have really beautiful color or leaves, sometimes with branras, I get different speckles of white. Sometimes the leaves are different and I always have a favorite. So I always choose this one to divide and then I have more plants. It is uh, said that it's very good to divide your perennials every three to four years. And with this example, you really cannot tell which ones were divided and they are really happy. I'm really happy with the result. October is also the month when I do all of my fall pots. I really like it and I love it. I think same as the uh, spring ones and summer ones, but in the fall, I'm waiting for the moment when the temperatures will drop a bit. So I get into the mood, you know, of pumpkins, all of the oranges and deep, uh, deep pinks but I have a very specific uh, plant which I received a few days ago. I have a lot of them. I will show you in uh, compositions. It's Saxifraga, Saxifrage maybe it's called, but this one is flowering in autumn. It's perfect for containers. I received a lot of them from a company we are friends with. So I'll be doing a lot of uh, autumn compositions with them. They are perfect for pots and I can't wait. Can't wait. I'm really excited about it. As you can see, my Henry, this is how I call my auto mower, uh, got tangled somewhere and it didn't, I didn't see that and it didn't mow the grass for three days. You can see how much it's growing. It's like summer, it's pretty, pretty uh, damp. So it's, it's loving the condition. This is why I'm going to sow my seeds. Uh, but now when we get a lot of leaves from the trees, so we have a lot of birch trees, I will be mowing with my uh, normal mower because uh, the robots will not gather all of the leaves, all of the debris. So this is what I'll be doing. I got some questions. Is it worth that hatching your loan uh, in the fall? I don't do that. I only do it in the uh, spring maintenance of my loan. But if you see that in the ground, you can see a lot of this debris and your loan is not that good. You can also try doing that in the fall, uh, but I don't, I don't do it. I've never done it. So I, I'm fine with my spring one. The other question was, what about the summer pots? Do I remove them? If they are fine, let them be. I still fertilize them from time to time, maybe not on a weekly basis, but I still come with the same fertilizer I used uh, during the summer months and I let them bloom as long as they want to. Maybe we'll get a very, very warm uh, fall and they will be blooming until the frost comes. So let's hope so. I can still see behind me the heliotropes and the gaura are blooming like it's the middle of the summer. So I'm really enjoying this month and I'm hoping for a beautiful October. I think that's all the jobs I wanted to talk about. If you have any ideas, what else can you do in October? Please write it in the comments so others can see and uh, let me know if you feel a bit dizzy with this weather, if you're in Europe or maybe uh, in other countries, you have the same. So it's warmer than usual. 
I'm feeling a bit like I'm in between seasons. I'm always like a bit lightheaded, I would say. Let me know if it's the same or if it's just me getting older. <laughs> Let me know. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Have a great October.